Good afternoon, everyone. It's the Random Canuck here. All right, so round one of the 2022 WHL playoffs has been completed uh, as of, I think, a couple of nights ago. Um, so here I am to go over uh, a little bit what happened in round one and also to make my round two predictions. I am wearing uh, my Random Canucks hat, uh, which is a Vancouver Canuck retro hat until I get one that matches the logo that I currently use for all my social media platforms and everything. Uh, I'm wearing my Saskatoon, older Saskatoon Blades uh, jersey uh, because then that way I don't uh, curse any team uh, in round two. All right, so we're going to get right to it here, starting with uh, a little bit of a review um, score-wise um, for, for each series. So uh, starting with the series that really was, or the two series really, yeah, the two series that really was no contest uh, in the Eastern Conference. Winnipeg, 4-1 to one over the Prince Albert Raiders, five games. Hey, Prince Albert got a game, and good on them. Uh, when their backs are up against the wall in game four, they win game four uh, by a score of 3-1. to one. Um, I think that was Winnipeg just kind of... You know, probably thinking in some ways that Prince Albert would just fold and roll over and die, uh, but they didn't. Uh, but going back to game one, uh, Winnipeg wins by a score three to one in Winnipeg. Very close game. Uh, not game two, not so much. Uh, the Ice win by the score of five to two. Then things uh, head to Prince Albert, and game three was really. Uh, where I was like, oh, okay, this this series is over. Even no matter what Prince Albert does here, Winnipeg absolutely pounds the Prince Albert Raiders in Prince Albert by a score of 10 to 1. 10 to 1. But that was not the biggest blowout win in round number one, and I'll get to that in a bit. Then again, like I said, uh, Prince Albert, they backed against the wall, nothing really to play for. They're down 3 nothing in the series, trying to just stay alive. They win by a score of 3-1, to one, and then back in Winnipeg, uh, the Ice end the series by a score of 8-2 to two in Game 5. So the best team in the WHL moves on. The Winnipeg Ice take out the Prince Albert Raiders, four games to one in five games. Um, absolutely expected this. I had Winnipeg in four, uh, but I am glad to see Prince Albert did get a game at home uh, in front of their home court fans, so... Um, but still, the, the Ice were just a much better team. Uh, the Edmonton Oil Kings sweep the Lethbridge Hurricanes 4 to nothing. Um Little surprise that Lethbridge didn't get a game. I, I would have thought they maybe got a game and a win, maybe a, an upset win in Edmonton or, or one on the road or at home against uh, Edmonton in games three or four, but it didn't happen. Uh, Edmonton pretty much dominated the whole series, um, except... Uh, and none of the games were really that close except for game four. Uh, game one was a 4-1 home victory for the Oil Kings. Uh, then in game two, they shut out the Lethbridge Hurricanes 4 to nothing. So already getting uh, getting an 8-1 lead in, in two games, scoring eight goals in two games. Uh, then in game three down in Lethbridge, uh, they get another four goals to make it a 4-1 a win in game three. So that's now four... 8 12, it's 12 to 2 in three games for the Edmonton Oil Kings over Lethbridge Hurricanes. Then finally, in game three, excuse me, game four, Edmonton completes the sweep by winning game four by a score of 6 to 4, which was an actual comeback victory. Um, Lethbridge was winning that game, I believe, by the score of 4 to 2 or something like that, or 4 3. Uh, and then Edmonton comes back and wins 6-4 or something like that. Well, they won 6-4, but I, I didn't really... I couldn't watch these games, obviously. Um, my cousin, however, was watching them uh, for very uh, specific reasons. Um, yeah, Edmonton's just a better team, and, and Lethbridge just did not have the scoring. Um, so I, I, I would have thought Lethbridge would have won a game, but they didn't. Um, Edmonton just totally dominated this series, sweeping the series in four games. And moving on to round two. Now, to talk about a series uh, that I am very surprised. This was, I wouldn't say disappointing series of the entire playoffs, but it didn't live up to my hype at all. I was really hyping up this series, and that was the Saskatoon Blades taking on the Moose Jaw Warriors. They lose in five games to the, Sask to the Moose Jaw Warriors. Uh, Moose Jaw wins the series four games to one. 
Um, the Warriors actually had a 3 nothing series lead, and, and it looked like it was going to be a sweep. Uh, Warriors win game one by the score of 5-2 to two in Moose Jaw, and then win game two by the score of 5-3. to three. Uh, and then again, we go to, uh, game four in Saskatoon and Saskatoon avoids the sweep, uh, by winning on home ice five to three over the Moose Jaw Warriors. Uh, but then, uh, two days later, it was all over. Uh, Moose Jaw wins game five at home by a score of six to three. Um, I think what happened with Saskatoon was they were tired. I, I really think they were tired. Um, I think they were I don't know if they were one of the older teams in the playoffs. I could be wrong. A little disappointed in Nolan Meyer that he didn't get another, you know, playoff series victory. Um, I was kind of hoping he'd go on a little bit of a playoff run here to end his WHL career as the leading, all-time leading wins leader in w, goalie wins in WHL history. But Moose Jaw just said, nope, we're not having any of it, and dealt with the Blades promptly. Um... I really thought this game was gonna, this series was gonna be the best series. Uh, I hyped it up as probably guaranteed to go. I believe in my video, I said guaranteed this is going seven games, and it didn't. It lasted five games. Um, very very quick series, but you know, good on the Moose Jaw Warriors. These teams were fairly close in the standings. It was the four versus five matchup, but Moose Jaw played more than just, like a, more than a fourth seed. Uh, Saskatoon, I think, were just tired, and I think Nolan Meyer was tired. You know, and I get it. You're trying to get the all-time wins record for a goalie in the WHL. And I, I'm not going to say that they turned it off in the playoffs. I'm not saying that at all. But it just really felt like all their energy was spent more getting Nolan Myers' record than it was in the playoffs. But that is just totally my opinion. But good on the Moose Jaw Warriors. The Moose Jaw Warriors are a great hockey club. And this is what Moose Jaw has been building towards, is beating teams like Saskatoon that used to beat up on them. Uh, so it's it's payback time for the uh, uh, Moose Jaw Warriors as they take down the Saskatoon Blades four games to one in five games. All righty. Now, to me, this, this was the best series, the absolute best series out of the entire first round of the playoffs. The Red Deer Rebels taking out the Brandon Wheat Kings in six games, four games to two. Uh, this was definitely the best series, and this is, I did listen to some of these games, uh, once it started to really get interesting, especially around the game four mark, um, so game one in Red Deer, the Rebels win by a score of five to nothing, and I thought, all right, maybe I'm gonna be wrong here, but in overtime in game two, the Brandon Wheat Kings win two to one in overtime off a face-off win, um, it was just one of those, uh, I'm sure they were really trying to do this. I'm sure this was a set play. I forget who scored the goal, but um, great play, great face-off win. Wheat Kings tie the series 1-1, winning 2-1 in overtime. Then we go to Brandon for game three, and the Rebels win 3-1. Then we stay in Brandon for game four, and Brandon wins by a score of 3-1. So it was Red Deer, Brandon, Red Deer, Brandon. And then we go back to Red Deer for game five, and the Rebels take care of business at home winning three to one. And then uh, the best game was this past Sunday. I did listen to the overtime on the uh, radio. It was really hard to find the, the Brandon Wheat Kings play-by-play uh, -play -play radio station on the computer, but I did find it. And, um, uh, oh gee, what was his name? It slipped my mind, geez. Rebels win in overtime and take this uh, uh, five to four and take the series four games to two and six games over the Brandon Wheat Kings. But my goodness, uh, this was the most exciting series of the entire first round, in my opinion. And I wasn't expecting that. I was saying Saskatoon uh, versus Moose Jaw was going to be the most exciting close blood blast series. Red Deer and Brandon was the best series in the first round, in my opinion. And, you know, Red Deer's a great team. To me, Winnipeg and Red Deer are the top two teams in the Eastern Conference. Yes, Edmonton finished second swept Lethbridge, but again, I just think as using the word team, I think Winnipeg and Red Deer, that's, yeah, uh, that's why I believe, I, I believe I picked them to meet in the Eastern Conference final, um, so yeah, but good on Brandon, uh, they fought really hard, almost forced a game seven, if it would have went to game seven, I think it would have been a toss-up, I really think it could have been a toss-up at this point, 
The only uh, slight edge that I would have given to the Red Deer Rebels if there was a Game 7 was that they had home ice advantage and Brandon did not. So uh, congratulations to Brandon Wheat Kings. Hell of a season. Did not expect to put up uh, a fight like that against Red Deer, and they certainly did. Be interesting to see what happens to them next season. Um, okay, as we move to the Western Conference, and to be honest, the Western Conference, three out of the four matchups were not really that exciting at all. Starting with the Portland Winterhawks, uh, sweeping the Prince George Cougars by a score of 4-0. So my underdog pick uh, for the first round was all for naught. Uh, Portland just rolls through the Prince George Cougars. Uh, game one, the Winterhawks win 5-2 in Portland. Then a closer game in game two, uh, the Winterhawks only win by a score of 2-1. Then things move to Prince George. Uh, again, all these games, except for game one, were really close. So it either could have went either way. Uh, this sweep does not, you know, they, even though I say they steamrolled them, they just didn't really steamroll them on the scoreboard, except for game one. They just kind of, you know, they just swept them, right? So it was just a really quick series. Uh, the series was done in like uh, five days, five, six days, uh, if that. Um, so game two. Portland wins 2-1. to one. Then we go to Prince George for Game 3, and Portland wins by a score of 2 to nothing. And then in Game 4, again, a really close game, but Prince George again comes up short, losing 2-1 to one to the Portland Winterhawks, uh, and their season is done in, in a four-game sweep. Uh, but I'm very, very proud of the Prince George Cougars. They even, Other than Game 1, they really showed that they are a team on the rise. Uh, Mark Lamb, uh, coach GM of the Prince George Cougars, um, I think the Prince George Cougars definitely have a bright future. I kind of, and I read a comment today on Facebook, on the Prince George Cougars Facebook page, and I do agree that, and this is just my opinion, I think Mark Lamb should just stick to the GM duties because he's done a great job there. I think they should focus on finding uh, a full-time head coach and instead of just having one guy do both jobs. But I get it. It's a small market, budget, that kind of deal. I, I totally get it. But I think if Prince George is going to be more successful – let the GM be the GM. Let the coach be the coach. Keep them separate and go from there. But heck of a job by the Prince George Cougars. Three of the four games were close. Could have went either way. Uh, they're definitely a team on the rise, and I really look forward to following them uh, a lot more next season and hopefully even going up to Prince George uh, on my WHL uh, game tour uh, next fall. We'll see what happens with that, but I'm hoping to get to Prince George sooner than later to see a Cougars game. But congratulations as well to the Portland Winterhawks. They were the better team. <clears throat> the Kamloops Blazers uh, sweep the Spokane Chiefs. This is one that, uh, I believe this was one that I got right. Um, I mean, I think just looking at my picks here. Um, I don't, yes, this was the only series in round one I got double right, uh, which is where I gave myself two check marks for getting the team right and the same amount of games. Other than that, uh, ice, I got one point, one check mark, excuse me, for only getting the team right. I said ice in four. Uh, Oil Kings, same thing. I had Oil Kings in five, gave myself one check mark. Uh, Rebels in five, I gave myself one check mark. I said Blades in seven, double X is there. Uh, Blazers in four games, double check marks there. I had Cougars, Prince George Cougars in seven games, double X is there. Um, and I'll get to the other series here. But yeah, Kamloops, to me, Kamloops was the best team in the West. Uh, even though Everett finished first, and I'll get to them next. Um, or, or do we? No, we'll, we'll get to them last. That's good. Because I really want, I kind of need to say something about Everett. Um, game one at home, Kamloops wins by a score of nine to nothing. Uh, second biggest blow victory uh, for any team in the first round. Game two, kind of more of the same. Blazers win at home by a score of six to two. Then things move down south of the border to Spokane, where Kamloops keeps it rolling, winning game three by a score of five to one. Logan Stan Coven gets a hat trick in that game, I believe. Um, it was just, it was just amazing. Uh, then in the sweep game, game four, uh, Kamloops wins by a score of three to nothing. Uh, so Cam Spokane only scored uh, three goals the entire series. Uh, Kamloops absolutely shut the Chiefs down. Uh, I do believe the Spokane Chiefs are are going to be going through a rebuild here again soon. Um, they just don't have the scoring. Kind of a little bit like uh, Lethbridge against Edmonton and a little bit with Prince George against Portland. Even though Portland and Prince George games were a little closer, these ones really weren't. 
uh, you know, nine nothing, six two, five one, three nothing. <clears throat> Sp Spokane just just couldn't really get the puck in the net, and that's because the Blazers are just so much better team overall than, than the Chiefs. Uh, but good on the Chiefs for making the playoffs. I do think next year, though, they're going to be a team near the bottom, but I could be wrong. The, the junior hockey is really weird that way. All right, moving on to the other Western Conference series. We have the Seattle Thunderbirds taking out the Kelowna Rockets in five games. Uh, this is really the first time I've kind of seen the Kelowna Rockets kind of yeah, sputter out, per se, and crash land um, in the playoffs. Uh, I guess I have to say Seattle is a much better team than I thought, uh, taking out the Kelowna Rockets in five games, four games to one. Uh, game one, Seattle wins by a score of six to nothing. Game two in Seattle, uh, the Thunderbirds win by a score of seven to three. Uh, in game number three in Kelowna, the Seattle Thunderbirds win by a score of three to one over the Rockets. Then we get two back-to-back -back overtime games. Uh, in game four, the Rockets get their only win in the season, three to two in overtime. Uh, and then in game four, uh, another overtime victory for the Seattle Thunderbirds as they end the series in game five in Seattle at home uh, as they get by the Kelowna Rockets with a score of four to one. Um, yeah, I, my cousin warned me. Uh, he, his prediction is Seattle is going to go all the way to the final. Uh, he really think, he thinks it's going to be Winnipeg versus Seattle. And... Um, I, I'm not quite sold on that, uh, but, you know, I I think I have to give props to the Seattle Thunderbirds because they're obviously a much better team than I thought. I thought Kelowna was going to kind of come back out of the dead and just take over the series, but they never did. Um, I think Kelowna is going through a bit of a rebuild, um, and we'll see what happens to them next year. Uh, but, yeah, kind of a disappointing playoff showing for the Kelowna Rockets in my view. All right, here is the upset of the first round. The Vancouver Giants, the lowest seed in the entire WHL playoffs next to um, Prince Albert. Actually, yeah, I think Prince Albert. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Prince Albert had less points. Let me just double check here. That goes, uh, let's go to standings. We go by conference. Vancouver had 53 points. Prince Albert had 61. So yes, this was the lowest seeded team in the entire playoffs. The Vancouver Giants stunned the Everett Silver Tips, winning in seven games, or sorry, yeah, six games over the Everett Silver Tips. Unbelievable. Congratulations to the Vancouver Giants. And again, I hate to say this, but Everett, every time I pick them in a playoff series, they choke. They choke. There's only been one time I've ever seen the Everett Silver Tips choke, not choke, and that was when they went to the 2018 2017 WHL final against the Swift Current Broncos and lost in six games there, too. Um, I don't know what it is with Everett. They have amazing seasons. They win the West, top seed in the West, and they choke in the playoffs. But from what I heard, they actually had a few injuries, so I shouldn't be too, too harsh. Injuries do key factor in this. But Vancouver just wasn't scared of them. Uh, they win game one by a score of 5-4 in overtime in Everett. And then Everett wins the next two games, uh, one at home and one in Vancouver. They win game two, 7-3. And that's where I kind of thought, oh, okay, Everett will come around. And then in game three in Vancouver, they win 6-2. to two, And then it was all Vancouver Giants after that. Game four, they this was the highest goal margin uh, of the entire first round. Really high-scoring game in Vancouver, well, in Langley, uh, the Vancouver Giants win game four by a score of 11 to six. Unbelievable. 11 to six. That is amazing job by Vancouver. Uh, game five, they win, they shut out the Everett Silver Tips. And I think that's where Everett fell apart. I think once they figured they could, they weren't going to score, um, Vancouver just took over from there. And in game six at home, they stunned their home crowd by winning 6-3 to three over the number one seeded Everett Silver Tips. So congratulations to the Vancouver Giants. Huge upset. Congratulations. You win the upset of the first round trophy. And your award for such upset, you get to play the Kamloops Blazers in round two. Good luck. Um, that is going to be... They're... In my tweet on my Twitter, I put they're playing the real number one seed in the Western Conference in the WHL. So, uh, again, Everett, another, you know, 
I'm not going to in another disappointment, another playoff disappointment. And this time they lose to a lower seeded uh, team uh, in the Vancouver Giants. Um, it's unbelievable. Vancouver had only 53 points and Everett had a hundred. They had a hundred. It's unbelievable. So, um, but hey, good on Vancouver for getting the job done on their part. Uh, Everett just could not do it. All right, so now that we're on to round two, we have our matchups here. It'll be the number one seeded Winnipeg Ice taking on the number four seed Moose Jaw Warriors. And also in the east, we have a 2-3 matchup, the Edmonton Oil Kings and the Red Deer Rebels, uh, the 2-3 seed. I am going to the game this Saturday, Red Deer Edmonton. I got my Rebels jersey racking and ready to go. Um, going to be going for the Rebels in that one because some most of my family I'm going with are as well. So kind of got to support the family reason being my cousin his i guess you'd call it stepson is a potential high draft pick for next season's whl playoffs and red deer is one of the games or one of the teams excuse me is possibly thinking about uh drafting him if he has a good season um and you know my cousin just isn't a fan of them and alberta whl teams we had a pretty good discussion about that the other day so um, and I'm really excited. It's the first time I really get to go to a sporting event with some of my family members for the first time since before, excuse me, before COVID. So I'm really excited about that. Um, it, uh, so yeah, I'm really excited to cheer on the Rebels with them. So see how it goes, but I'm sure Edmonton will win. I mean, it's, we'll see how it goes. Then the Western Conference. Um, whoop, I forgot to type in uh, my other uh thing here but that's okay i got the the thing here all right so we're gonna start in the eastern conference um i have winnipeg in five games winnipeg to me is the best team in the east playing right now um i i just i just don't see how moose jaw is gonna stop them i mean they could i mean they they took out saskatoon quite quickly and promptly but i think winnipeg's a whole other animal um i i can see moose jaw winning a game i don't think it's gonna be a sweep um so I have Winnipeg in five games. Edmonton versus Red Deer. And I'm going to repeat myself. I have said if there's any team that I think could take out Edmonton in the, in the playoffs as an upset, it's going to be either Red Deer or Saskatoon. Well, Saskatoon's out. Red Deer's the last remaining one that I have. Um, but I'm going with Red Deer in seven games. I think this series is going seven games. I think this is going to be the best series in the entire uh, second round. So... Um, we'll see what happens there. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be a dandy, and I'm so excited uh, to go to game number two on Saturday night in Edmonton uh, to watch these two teams play. We'll see what happens. Edmonton's got the defense and the goaltending. Red Deer has the offense. And it's going to be a classic offense versus defense matchup. We'll see what happens. I have Red Deer winning in seven games. Western Conference, the number two seed, taking on the number eight seed, Vancouver Giants. Um, I have Kamloops in four. I mean, to me, Kamloops is the real number one seed in this. Um, I, I I don't know what happened with, you know, Everett. I, I, I really can't say. But, man, um, it's disappointing. Uh, but, you know, I just think with Logan, Stan, COVID, and Gang... I just, I just don't know how Vancouver. If Vancouver somehow beats them, and and they and they advance, then you know, good on them. But I, I just don't see it. Portland versus Seattle. So this is this. I didn't type this out yet, so I got a little excited. This is the uh, number three seed taking on the number four seed. Um, who? This is a tough one. This really is tough. Portland, though, pretty much owned. Uh, Seattle in the regular season. I think I do have the numbers here. Uh, yeah, because I was texting my cousin, so I do have the numbers here. Uh, during the 2021-22 season, it was the Winterhawks claiming the season series with a record of 9-4-0-0, including a 5-4 victory on April 2nd to close out the festivities. In fact, Portland is winner of four straight against Seattle, beginning with a 3-2 shootout victory on March 11th. The Thunderbirds' last victory against the Winterhawks came back on February 19th with a 5-1 win in Portland. So, I, Seattle's got their, their work cut out for them. Um, I have Portland in six games. I'll, I'll say Portland in six games. Um, 
I just think Portland's better overall, and they, they 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 clearly were the better team in the regular season. Yes, I know regular season really should not matter, um, but we will see what happens here. So, um, yeah, it's it's going to be there are some very good uh, second round matchups. Again, I I do think some series will end quite quickly. Um, especially the Winnipeg and uh, versus Moose Jaw and, and Kamloops versus Vancouver series. But you never know. You never know. If Moose Jaw can take out Winnipeg and Vancouver takes out Kamloops, well, then all bets are off. And then we'll, that just opens a whole can of, 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 of stuff. So we'll see what happens. Uh, again, if you missed my first video, I my conference final picks were uh, in the East. It was Winnipeg versus Red Deer. It was Winnipeg in six games over Red Deer. And in the West, I had Everett in seven games, or Kamloops in seven games over Everett. Everett obviously did not make it even out of the first round. And my WHL champion pick was Winnipeg versus Kamloops, with Winnipeg winning in six games over Kamloops. So my my WHL championship matchup is still in there, but it could go all downhill after this round. So uh, we'll see what happens. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the Random Canuck, and we will see you again after round number two. Um, I will be taking video and stuff like that when I'm at the uh, Red Deer Rebels game in Edmonton, and um, I will upload what I can to the channel. Thanks for watching. This has been the Random Canuck. Bye for now. Enjoy round two.